What's going on Imperials, it's Emperor Cubone here. Pokemon has had some pretty great designs over the years, some of them being quite surprising and extremely creative. A lot of the time that's pretty great, but thinking so creatively can lead you to blow past ideas that could be considered obvious. But just because something is predictable doesn't always mean that it's bad. With Pokemon Sword and Shield on the horizon, I thought it might be interesting to point out some fairly obvious Pokemon designs that for some reason they've yet to include. However, these are in no way going to be specific to the Galar region. Meaning this list will go for Gen 8, but also for the next one, and so on, until they're all done. So even if a specific inspiration doesn't work for Britain, it still should be done at some point. To me, by far the most obvious inspiration for a Pokemon that they've yet to use is an Armadillo. This tiny mammal is covered in protective plating that it can use for defense. A Pokemon with armor that curls up into a ball sounds so perfect. Maybe a two-stage line that you can find early in the game. It could be a steel type eventually, but I see them as ground types for sure. It would be lovely to see the animation of it curling up, like we see with Sandshrew or Dawnfan. I'm honestly surprised that this has not been done before, but it could easily slip into the lineup of just about any region. One of my personal favorite animals is a manatee. These pleasant sea cows are always a joy to just watch floating along in the water. Now I know that we have Dugong, which is another name for a manatee, but it's not the same thing. The body shape and the fins are different, and the utter lack of facial hair means that we need a proper go. So obviously, this would be a water type. I could see it either being a single stage or having a pre-evolution as well. I imagine pure water might be the best, but you could maybe add psychic or fairy. Either way, this slow-moving sea creature would probably be pretty defensive, considering its general heft. Another one that I think should have been checked off by now is an ostrich. These giant birds are well known enough around the world that even if you don't have any indigenous to your area, you would still be able to recognize this freakishly large bird. Now again, we do have the Dodrio family, but despite being large, flightless birds that run at high speeds, they're far too nondescript to be considered THE ostrich Pokémon. So let's make an official one. Or an emu could work, I guess. I'm not really picky. You can't say that the field is too narrow, since it's not like they haven't repeated themselves in the past. We just need some proper representation for this kind of animal. And considering how many birds they make all the time, I don't think it's too much of an ask. As I said, this could be a very fast Pokemon, and I'm thinking that maybe it could even be a fire type, but would of course have access to some decent flying type moves, being a bird and all. If you had to categorize me, I guess you could say that I'm a cat person. It's not that I dislike dogs, I just like cats better. But when you get out into the wild, it's no contest. Big cats are incredibly cool. It's amazing to watch these apex predators, and they come in so many breathtaking varieties. One that I think we should have is a snow leopard. Any animal shifted into a tundra environment usually results in something awesome. But there's just something about the leopard that could make for an intimidating, but also endearing design. This option would probably have to be a two-stage Pokémon, but would also be part Ice type And maybe you could even throw in a little Dark as well? We'll just have to see, and not to steal too much from Weavile, but I think a Snow Leopard Pokémon should be fairly speedy, but mostly an attacker. Maybe even evolving into a Saber-toothed Cat, to resemble the old fossils. We've had some Pokémon in the Deer family so far. But something we still haven't gotten is a big old moose. These animals are bigger, with a giant spread of horns. It's basically a deer bison, which just sounds awesome. But having a huge second or even third stage moose Pokémon around the mid-game would be pretty amazing to include. 
For some reason, I see this option as a possible grass type, with a mane made of moss, and even some moss overflowing from the antlers. That would be pretty cool. Maybe even a grass ground type. But either way, it could get moves like Horn Leech or Horn Drill to include in its arsenal. Another small mammal that I'm very surprised hasn't come up yet is a porcupine. A tiny animal covered in spikes already sounds like a Pokemon to begin with. So just make it purple or yellow or something and you've got a Pokemon. I see this as maybe a single stage, but it could also have a pre-evolution as well. But a porcupine would probably have to be a poison type. It's just too tempting not to make the quills extra dangerous. Maybe even poison and normal? We gotta get that combination out of the way eventually, right? But I could definitely see a big poisonous porcupine being some gym leader's ace on their team. To me, another opportunity that's been on the table for far too long is to make a Pegasus Pokemon. And to me, a Pegasus would be the perfect chance to make a common pure flying type Pokemon. The only one that we have now is a legendary. Everything else is dual typed. And only in recent generations have they even allowed flying to be considered a primary typing with the likes of Noivern, but they have already been better about that in what we've seen so far in the Gala region. But having a pure flying type that you can catch before the post game would be really great, and truthfully might even throw some people off for not being familiar with flying on its own in combat. And having a mythological flying horse to personify this would be just about perfect. I could see this too as a two-stage line of aerial equines. They could maybe even be other regional variants of another horse line if you wanted. Just make it happen in some way and we'll be happy. I'm always fond of dinosaur Pokemon, whether they're fossils or not. But one of the now extinct behemoths that we've yet to get is a Parasaurolophus. These horned reptile beasts are among what seem to be one of the six most common types of dinosaurs. Am I taking that sample data from the Land Before Time? Almost certainly. But you have to admit that Parasaurolophus is a fantastic inspiration that could make a stellar Pokemon. These duck-billed dinosaurs are commonly depicted as living by the water. So I'm thinking that dragon and water could work. I know it's one that we've had before, but one is a legendary and the other is a difficult trade-only evolution. So having one that is slightly easier to get might be pretty fun, even if it's not always so easy to train. It's also believed that they could issue large bellows for communication, so other moves such as Hyper Voice might be in order as well. This one might not be as obvious as some of the others, but a Llama Pokemon could certainly be interesting to see. It's not a particularly threatening animal, but it could always be a more cutesy version. To me, I can't really see it being anything other than normal. You could maybe throw in some other type if you want, but pure normal works just fine for me. I would, however, definitely give it the fur coat ability to bulk up its defenses. Plus, it just makes sense. I don't think you'd be able to really style it like Furfru, though. I see it at least as a second stage, but I suppose it could be a one-off if you're looking to trim down some of the fat in the decks. Another obvious Pokemon, to me anyway, is a hummingbird. Again, with the number of birds that we get all the time, I'm surprised it hasn't come up yet. But these tiny colorful birds with the super fast wings are almost already Pokemon in real life, so you don't really need much in the way of transition. To me, with its connection to flowers, it would make sense to have a hummingbird be a grass type. Probably grass flying? but I could even maybe see them being Grass Fairy. Or at least having access to some good Fairy-type moves. It would probably be two stages, and would of course be a very fast Pokémon in battle. This one is probably not on the same level as all of the others, but Pokémon based around human influence have always been in the franchise. So to me, one of the most basic human-based things that they could do is a Light Bulb. I could easily see a cute little electric-type light bulb Pokémon, maybe being found in one of the larger cities in the region. 
There are even different kinds of light bulbs if you wanted to give it different forms as well. But then you could have it evolve into maybe a lamp or some floodlights or something in either two or three stages. We've already had candle Pokémon, so why not update it to the more modern sensibilities? It could get things like Flash or the Illuminate ability. Although now that I say that out loud, those aren't exactly the most useful tools in the toolbox. But if you're going with something human-related, I think a light bulb would certainly fill that role beautifully. And lastly, another Pokémon that I could easily see is some kind of Orca. I know that we already have whales before, but this is different. Presumably, these Pokémon could be a little more vicious than the others. After all, they are called Killer Whales, but the beautiful black and white color scheme could definitely inspire some great design choices, outside of Kyogre. Obviously, a water typing would be needed, maybe even water dark, but two stages would be appropriate for this potential inspiration. I'm thinking maybe the Thick Fat ability even though water already resists fire and ice anyway. But the incredibly strong move Water Spout would be a given for this powerful new Orca Pokémon. So, those are just some real-world inspirations that really should be Pokémon at some point. Hopefully sooner rather than later. What do you think would make a good Pokémon? Let me know down in the comments. Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And we'll see you around next time!